In this tutorial, we will have a quick introduction to AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda, it is a service from AWS and it is not specific to AWS IoT. The main purpose of AWS Lambda is to execute your code in the Amazon service and you don't have to worry about the runtime management of your code as long as you write your code in one of the languages supported by AWS Lambda. So to use Lambda, you log into your AWS console and search for Lambda and you will be getting the AWS Lambda console. So this is the AWS Lambda console again similar to other AWS services. So to create your own function, uh, you go and click create function, give a name to your function. I'm calling my function for the time being my function and you choose the language in which you want to write your code. I'm choosing Python 3.8 because that's what I'm comfortable with and here you have to choose a execution role so more about roles we will discuss later. This is similar to our policy in AWS IoT where you make sure which all resources can be accessed by the Lambda. Basically, we are doing the authorization uh, here. For the time being, you can choose the default option and choose create function. And this is the screen where you will be entering your function as well as testing it out. So similar to other Amazon resources, you can see at the top, there's a unique number, error number, given to your function also. Okay, so this number is unique across AWS. And in this designer window, uh, you can see the interaction of your function with other Amazon services. So it's basically showing what even will trigger this function and what all other resources can be accessed by this function. So at the time being, there are no uh, other events which are triggering this function. and my, your function it doesn't access any other resources but later we will be adding our uh, IoT core here so that these functions can be triggered by IoT core and this function can be used for accessing other resources such as DynamoDB or SNS or S3 so that we will be doing in a uh, future tutorial so here this is the function code window this is where you can enter your code so this is like a code editor where you can enter your code that is one option other option is to write code in your own computer and zip it and upload it for deployment so deployment we will see later so you can do it as a zip file or you can store your code in amazon s3 service which is a different service for uh, storing data so you can upload your code from there also but in this tutorial we are directly going to enter our code in this console itself and we'll be running it so code will come back soon Below that, uh, here you can set any environment variable which can be used by your code. Again, uh, not very important at this point. The important one is this one, the basic settings. Okay, So if you feel to change the language at a later point of time, you can come and change here. This option, memory, this is basically setting uh, what is the maximum memory that should be allocated to your program during runtime. Why it is important? Because Amazon AWS is going to charge you based on how much memory your program is actually consuming and how long your program is going to run. So they are going to multiply uh, this amount of memory with the duration for your function is running or your code is running and you will be charged based on that. So of course there are some uh, free limits. So you can see every month 1 million requests. Uh, that means 1 million events triggering your code is free as well as 400,000 gigabytes second. So that's why the unit is gigabyte second because it's a product of memory as well as time. Uh, so this looks quite a lot, but if you use a function to process each and every packet coming from IoT, uh, you will exhaust this free limit quite fast. So that you should keep in mind. Once you exhaust this free limit, you will be charged according to the region where you're hosting so we are at north virginia and this is the pricing for uh, north virginia okay so every subsequent 1 million requests will be charged 20 cents and uh, for execution time uh, this much for every gigabyte second so that you should keep in mind so it seems like uh, the best option will be to keep this memory quite low but that is not the case because how much time your program will actually uh, take to execute will be a function of memory. So if you keep the memory too low, uh, the program will take longer. So of course the product will go up 
and if you keep it very low maybe there won't be sufficient memory and your code may fail also so initially we'll have to do some kind of profiling after writing our code to find out how much memory it is taking and how long it is taking to execute uh, then only we can set it anyway we are doing a very small program so we need uh, minimal memory here so we can keep it at 128 mb but it can go up to uh, around 3g close to 3g slightly less okay so let's keep it at uh, 128 mb this one is specifying the timeout for your code so now you know your code is running in a server uh, you do not have direct access to your code once you deploy it so what happens if your code goes into some kind of infinite loop and never comes out so what will happen uh, of course Amazon they will charge you and if it goes to an infinite loop at the end of the month you will have a, a huge bill so to avoid it we have this timeout option here that basically means after this much amount of time your program will be automatically killed uh, so that it doesn't incur any charges okay so again this we have to uh, set very carefully the maximum timeout currently supported is 15 minutes okay 15 minutes is the maximum Again, that keeps on changing as Amazon they increases their server capacity. And this number keeps on in increasing as of now in 2020. Uh, this is the limit, 15 minutes. But for our program, again, we'll be writing a very simple program. Uh, maybe a few seconds are enough, but let's keep it uh, one minute. And again, later, if you want to change your role, the authorization, you can come and change here. Okay, there is one more important thing that you can change here that I will discuss later when we come back. But remember to set this memory uh, as well as timeout values. Other options, these uh, advanced option VPC is virtual private cloud. That means instead of running the Lambda in Amazon's cloud you can create a private cloud virtual private cloud and you will be able to deploy it there we are not going to use it now uh, this one concurrency is another term uh, important one so it is possible that your function is accessed asynchronously that means there will be multiple requests multiple events coming concurrently which will be triggering your function okay so if you wait for the function to finish wants to process the next request it may be taking a lot of time uh, so instead of that we can set concurrency so that he can handle uh, multiple messages multiple requests or multiple events at the same time so what is the maximum concurrency is set here 1000 now uh, you can again uh, reserve it uh, which will guarantee that you will always have this much okay uh, and that will uh, cause additional charges so for the time being thousand is more than good enough that means he may be able to process a thousand packets at the same time now asynchronous uh, invocation again we will discuss it later these are advanced topic but uh, at this point uh, this much is good enough now let's go ahead and look at the code so this is where we are going to write our code and let me delete all this default thing and start from here so although the name is a lambda function it doesn't mean that your code can be composed of a single function okay? your code can be like any other program it can be composed of uh, multiple functions no issues but like our main function in c or c++ uh, there should be a special function a unique function which will be invoked when your AWS Lambda function is triggered. So what is that unique function name um, that is up to you and you need to specify that function name to AWS Lambda. Then only he can invoke that special function, that unique function whenever a trigger happens. Okay. So that's uh, what I mentioned. There is one more setting here. So if you come here, there will be Lambda function dot Lambda handler. Okay. So this part don't change. But here you can see lambda handler so this is basically saying the function which will be invoked whenever a trigger happens is lambda handler if you're not changing the function name keep it as such but if you are giving your own initial function name uh, you should change it and you should have a function with that name here so by default its name is lambda handler but you are free to change it uh, currently i'm not changing it yeah so i'm 
keeping it as such. So this editor, uh, this has all the features of our normal IDE developers. So you can uh, use them. If you want to add new files, you're free to add any number of files. There is a limit, uh, I guess it is 3 MB. Your code cannot be more than 3 MB if you're using this editor. If it is more than 3 MB, we will have to write it in our system, zip it and upload it here that we will see later. Again, uh, first code, it will be quite small. So you can uh, make it to full screen also, and we can write here. Okay, so that uh, special function which will be invoked should always have two parameters. One is called event, another one is called a context. Okay, so event is basically uh, will be a JSON object. So whenever the Lambda is invoked, that will be invoked by a special event. So as I mentioned before, this event can be a packet coming from IoT or a new entry to a DynamoDB or a new SMS. All of them are considered as events. So whenever an event comes, it will trigger this function and that event has to pass some data to our function so that he can do some processing. So that data will be passed in the form of a JSON object and that object is represented by this event. For example, in our IoT processing, we were sending some packet which has the information about timestamp as well as the uh, current temperature. Okay, so this is a JSON object and you want to process this information using your Lambda function. So this, this entire JSON object will be coming to your code as this object called event. Okay, so as far as Python is concerned, this is representing uh, nothing but a dictionary. Python dictionaries, they are much more powerful than JSON. They support more data types, but uh, it's perfectly fine to call this is a dictionary uh, from the viewpoint of Python. So uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm planning to send this packet to Lambda and whenever he gets this packet, he should extract the temperature value, which will be in degree Celsius. He should convert it into Fahrenheit and print it. Okay, so that's what my intention is. Okay, so let me write here what this function does. It uh, take temperature value, convert to Fahrenheit, and print. That is what this function is doing. So this event will be this JSON object. So if you want to extract only the temperature part from there, it's very straightforward. Uh, you can do event. This is like a dictionary so event of temperature so event of the attribute you want to extract uh, that will give you the value so you will basically get the temperature value so let's convert it into fan and heat so assuming this is in degree celsius we can easily convert it like this we can do temperature times 9 by 5 plus 32 so that will give us uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit now let's just print that value print uh, temperature over this one okay, so let's print like that and let's return uh, zero also. So where this return value is going, where this print will come, all these details we'll see. So this is a, a simple code. This context will basically give the information about the running environment, uh, like the settings that we have done, how much memory is allocated, what is the timeout, all those information will be coming through this object. So if you want to use that information, you can use, but in, in most cases, uh, we won't be using it. We'll be only using this even part. Okay, so once you have written your code uh, before actually deploying it, you should test it. Okay, so for testing, uh, many times it is very difficult to send the actual trigger. For example, uh, now I don't want to actually send my IoT packet, but without sending it itself, I want to test my function. So that feature is also there. For that, you should go here, uh, select a test event, configure test event, and here you can uh, model that. JSON object which will be coming uh, 
uh, during runtime, the real world. Okay, so let's call some name here, my event. So we are sending the timestamp. And the temperature value, which is this one. So timestamp, it used to be some string. So let's put uh, 16, 6, 20, 20. And temperature, let's put some temperature value, 25. And you create it. So once you have created it, uh, you can run the test. So what happens is uh, Lambda, he will send that JSON object as a parameter to this function and this function will run and we'll be able to see the output. Now you can generate uh, multiple test events here and you can choose which one you want to use for testing from this drop down menu. So remember to save your code here once you have finished coding. Now we are ready to test so you can uh, go ahead and click test here. So the output of test it will come here as well as at the top so let's go ahead look at the top so you can see execution succeeded that means there are no syntax errors and no runtime errors were observed first he will show what is written by your function it is returning zero yeah because we are returning zero here and here he will also tell you this is the profiling information okay how much time your code took it took only 1.34 millisecond but the minimum duration for which aws will bill you is 100 millisecond so it will be always in multiples of 100 milliseconds so even if you take 101 millisecond they will count it as uh, 200 millisecond and he will also say like how much memory is used so this information uh, can be used for setting the limits later now here you can see the detailed output of execution uh, the execution started here and here you can see the output 77 which is the temperature in fahrenheit and he's saying like you yeah, code finish so it is successful so this is what you should do before actually using your lambda for any practical purpose you can test as many numbers as you want uh, you can change the data and uh, do testing and at the top now if you come and uh, there is this option monitoring uh, if you go there he will give you some uh, metrics so these metrics they are coming from another service from aws called uh, clockwatch Again, CloudWatch, it gives you monitoring across all the Amazon services. So you can watch uh, metrics from IoT, uh, DynamoDB, Lambda, SNS, all the information you can see here. So he will basically tell you uh, how many times your function was invoked, uh, what is the execution time, how many times errors happen, all this information uh, you will be able to get. So here you can see like he's saying like it was invoked only once and how much time it took, things like that. So uh, as you run it more number of times, uh, you can see this information here. Now, another interesting thing is uh, we used a print statement in our function. Once you deploy your code and it is running, you send a lot of packets. And after that, where are you going to see the output? You cannot physically come here and check the output here because uh, this logging at the top happens only when you do this test operation this doesn't happen when your code is actually deployed okay so if you want to see the sprint output after deployment again you can do it through cloudwatch you can either go to cloudwatch from your console or you can click here uh, view logs in cloudwatch from here he will automatically go to the cloudwatch console and here you'll be able to see something called log streams and you can take the latest log and there you'll be able to see the same log that you saw there at the top. Okay, so I invoked the function twice, so you can see the output here. So both times the output is 77. Okay, so that's the brief introduction. Now, uh, if you want to see all your AWS uh, Lambda functions, you can always go to the dashboard here. And if you feel like uh, deleting any function, uh, you can go to the functions option here uh, you can choose the function and you can go under action and choose delete okay so that uh, there are no requests coming accidentally and that doesn't incur any billing but remember uh, just for keeping the function there aws they don't charge you they will charge you only if your function runs and they will charge you based on how long your function runs and how much memory it is consumed 
Okay, so in next tutorial, we will actually connect our IoT code to AWS Lambda and we will see how the Lambda function can be invoked by sending IoT packets. See you.